Hello everyone, this is Steve, and I've finally found a solution to a problem that's been plaguing one of my clocks. This is my easy build clock, and every once in a while, the clock will get into a mode where the escapement just has no energy. I've finally found a solution for that. In this video, I'm going to describe what the problem is, and how I fixed it, and how you can make your easy build clock run even better. The, the problem occurs where the escapement just completely loses energy. Even though there's a drive weight on the clock, uh, the clock just seems to stall out. Here I am manually moving the pendulum back and forth, and as you can see, the escapement just doesn't want to rotate. If you push on things and wiggle the gears around, the clock will run for a little while. Um, this is actually an experimental clock where I've exaggerated the problem and forced the clock to stop. Uh, the way the clock is right now, it'll probably run for about five minutes and then it'll get to a mode where the escapement just completely loses energy again. Now, right now the clock is running just fine but in a few minutes, this clock is going to stop. I'm just letting the pendulum free swing right now. Uh, with this experiment that forces the problem to occur, this clock will probably run for less than five minutes and then the, the escapement will stall. And the interesting thing about this problem is that increasing the drive weight doesn't seem to do anything to cure the problem. There's a drive weight on this clock that should be rotating all the gears and rotating the escapement, but the, the escapement just doesn't want to move. I've been calling this problem uh, sticky gears, uh, and sometimes silk PLA seems to be worse than others. Other people have great luck with silk PLA. Uh, it's taken a long time to figure out what was going on with this clock. I finally found a solution. The problem can be observed in this gear friction mechanism that I built, which is just a chain of gears. Each gear has a 5 to 1 speed up ratio. And what I would do is I would clamp this onto a table and then add a small weight on a piece of wire and I would just attach it to the gear. And I would measure how much weight would be required to get these gears to spin. One thing I noticed when I was running this test is if there was any pressure applied to this fastest moving gear right here, the test would basically stall. I would typically apply a varying number of washers to the slow gear and then measure how much weight it would take to get the, the gear train to move. I figured that this test would be able to easily measure how much friction there is in the gear teeth but one thing I would notice is a small amount of tilt applies a tiny bit of pressure to the fastest moving gear. This mechanism just completely stalls. And so when I did the test, I would always have to tilt it slightly such that gravity is pulling away from the fast moving gears and then I could get an accurate measurement of the friction. Uh, if I exaggerate if I exaggerate the problem and just tilt, tilt the mechanism such that all the pressure is applied you know, in the direction towards the fastest moving gear, I really cannot even turn this. As soon as I tilt away, then a very small pressure and the gears will start moving again. So I believe the exact same problem is occurring on this easy build clock. Here's a large model of the same clock. And one thing to notice is that the, here's, here's the escapement and there's a second gear on the same arbor. And this gear is really close to the powertrain. And even though they are straight spur gears, it appears to have a small amount of tilting of what, there appears to be a small amount of tilting in the gears which is then pushing against the escapement and when there's any 
sideways pressure in this direction towards the escapement, the escapement just gets pinched. The escapement being the fastest moving gear in the whole clock with the smallest amount of torque, any pressure being applied from the gear behind it will basically stall out the escapement. So what the solution was, was to find a way so that there was no pressure being applied to the escapement. Now, one solution would possibly be to add an intermediate plate so that these two gears are on completely different arbors. And that way there can be no pressure from the back gear. Now that, that becomes a complete redesign of the clock. So I decided to look for a different solution. And what that solution became was adding a slight helical angle to one pair of gears. Uh, you can see in this gear, the, the large portion of, this is gear four, and the pinion on gear three has a slight helical angle. It only takes a change to these two gears, and what's going to happen is now when the clock is running, gear four will be rotating, and as it pushes against gear three, the helical action will push gear three away from the escapement. I'm going to take this clock and put these gears with the helical angle into them and watch how the problem is fixed. If you used shaft collars to put the, the minute hand assembly together, it's really easy to remove the old gear four and add in the modified gear four to fix the problem. And then all you have to do is add the, all you have to do is add the shaft collar back to the shaft, tighten it down with an Allen wrench and the clock is ready to be assembled back together. If you didn't use shaft collars and this was a press fit, then you actually have to pull off the old gear four and press it into position. Much easier if you built the clock using shaft collars. This is the same clock with the same drive weight as before. And you can see immediately that there's a larger pendulum amplitude. There's no pressure on the escapement and the escapement just has a lot more energy than before. What is happening with this modification is gear three is being pushed away from the escapement. So the escapement is the escapement has much less resistance to, to rotate. Uh, it turns out that it only takes a very small amount of pressure to pinch against the escapement to make it stop. So this modification has been added onto the design at my mini factory. Uh, if you've already built any of the easy build clocks, it's well worth going to my mini factory and downloading the, an updated gear three and gear four and reprinting them and adding them to your clock. Uh, it turns out that the only two of my designs that have this problem are the easy build clocks. They're the only ones with two gears sharing a single shaft and especially the only ones with an extra gear on the same shaft as the escapement. This clock right now, I used to have it running in eight day mode and I still struggled with it. It, it would usually run for a few days and every once in a while it would just stall. And I added more drive weight. I did all kinds of things to try to fix it. Once I added the helical gears on gears three and four, clock runs beautifully and I switched it to a 14 day runtime and clock has been running great for a couple weeks now, no problem at all. So this is a great fix for what I used to call sticky gears. The clock is now running beautifully. Thank you. I'll wrap up this video showing off a couple of the things that I've been working on. Uh, some of you may have seen what I call a, a silent desk clock and 
when I first built this thing, I, first, I thought it really was silent. Um, but over time, the, the plastic starts making a little bit of a rattling noise. And if I move the microphone, stop the clock in the back for a second, you can hear that there is actually a little bit of a plastic rattling noise. A woodworking club that I'm in had a project challenge and they supplied a very limited amount of bamboo. Uh, technically it's a grass, not wood, but the project, the challenge was to make something out of the bamboo. And this is the, the clock that I built. You can see that the two designs are very similar. The gear ratios have been the, the gear ratios have been updated, uh, still 60 to 1 between the second and the minute hand, and 12 to 1 to the hour hand, obviously. But the teeth are a little bit bigger and rounded, easier to cut on a CNC router. Uh, I would have probably built this a little bit bigger, uh, but given the limited amount of material, this was as large as I could make it. Um, I'm probably going to try to build a couple larger of these. But one thing that really stands out is the wood is really, truly silent. The PLA version of this clock, you can hear that from five or six feet away. It's, it's a gentle whirring sound, but this wooden version, the, the wood really seems to dampen the, the noise and you have to get within six to 12 inches away from this before you can hear any kind of noise coming from this clock. So I think I'm really gonna like building this similar design out of wood. So stay tuned. I'm not sure how or where I will release this design uh, because my mini factory doesn't allow DXF files. They only allow STLs. So I'm looking for a, a place where I can release this design. Stay tuned. More clock designs should be coming soon. Thank you.